Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, which is 11 a.m. in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. Remember, for the next couple of weeks at least, uh, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the US, which is 8 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. if you're in the UK. But do remember the premieres are going away as of the 12th of November, so after that time, if you want to watch my streams, you can't watch me live, you can watch them in the, under the video section on my Twitch channel. Smurfberry Barbecue, for you were first, it's good to see you Smurf. Uh, leg Mahog, 20 seconds left if you need a bathroom break go now. <laughs> or if you need to do stuff in the kitchen, do that now too also. We, yes, kitchen, Oh, so cheeky. It's good to see you Leg Mahog. Sniper Girl says, yes, Phil does just chat, is coming on. <laughs> Hi to you as well, Sniper Girl. Leg Mahog says, greetings Smurf and Sniper. It's good to see you guys and girls. Um, yes, so the premieres are going away. If you want to watch the videos, you can watch them under the video section on my Twitch page, as I've said. We're going to continue working on the house in the hollow, doing the bathroom. Uh, we're going to finish, we're going to continue doing some assets for the bathroom. Um, I did design the toilet last night and I've finished the bathtub. I think we might do the bathtub today. Android Lust, hey you too, it's good to see you. Uh, Snappy Girl says to Legmog, use the bathroom. There is no throne. No, but I did. I have made it. I've made the toilet. We've got a UV map it and texture it. But I think we might do the bathtub today. So you guys have got a place that you can wash. You don't have to go out to that pond in front of the building all the time to wash. Because it's a bit cold. The, the boys will know what I'm talking about. Um, so you can, we'll, we'll do the bathtub so you can have a bath. A nice hot bath. Uh, Snappy Girl says to Legmog's greetings and salutations. Yes, how is everyone? Is everyone well? Did you all have a good night, good day, whatever time it is, wherever you are? Uh, do remember too, guys and girls, if you have any questions, if you're watching my channel for the first time, uh, feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hello like these guys, then that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Android Lust says, Phil is going to make a dirty bathtub. Yeah, probably will make a dirty bathtub, actually. <laughs> you know me too well, Android Lust. Um, Legmog says, all good, thanks. Got ensnared in a Tinder scam. Oh, dude, you have the worst luck when it comes to your romantic life, don't you? Wow. What happened, Legmog? Tell us. We want to know. What was the scam? Smurfberry says, uh, I'm researching Blender key mapping. It's kind of bad <laughs> as a my user. Max's key mapping is really good too, by the way. Um, <laughs> wow. You guys have been bitching about Blender's UV mapping and now the key mapping. Uh, Android Lust says, uh, a Tinder bot gotcha. He's asking Legmog. Yes, come on, Legmog. What was a scam? I think we had a bot in my chat yesterday, actually. They also whispered me on Twitch, which I immediately deleted and did not click on any links that I have in my that, that came along with that whisper. <laughs> so, if any other streamers out there, be very careful of these uh, anonymous people posting in your chat with links. You guys probably wouldn't have seen it because, unless you're a, no, you guys probably wouldn't have seen it because he <laughs> it was a bot, obviously, and didn't uh, it wasn't subbed to my channel, so links get automatically removed. I should have got told you guys. The, the mods to actually ban them, but if they come back, we'll do it then. Uh, Smurfer is asking, how many kidneys did she get away with? <laughs> uh, Legmog says, matched with a girl, but she was, let's say, being kind of suspicious. My eyebrows first raised when she asked for my number, like three messages in. As a veteran of online dating, this, has ne this never happened. Ah, well there you go, that's a good tip for all you guys that, that are on thinking about going onto Tinder. Because I mean, that I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> um, Legmog says, but they were doing bespoke responses, so it was a human at least. Okay. Yeah, they're the, they're the worst ones sometimes. you got to be careful of the humans. They'll get you in every time where a bot will fail. 
Um, Android Lust says to Smokeberry, this is my first impression with Blender, but if I wanted to really use it, I'd deal with it. Remember guys, Blender is free. I mean, you know, you're not paying for it. So <laughs> cut Blender a little bit of slack, I think. Um, Sniper Girl says, I'm doing well, just got done with all the sculpting in ZBrush. Now UVing the low, so it should be baked down tonight. Good to hear. Good to hear, Sniper Girl. <laughs> ZBrush. <Whoa. laughs> what a horrible, horrible interface. So I feel for you having to work with that program, Sniper Girl. Uh, Legmog says, so I played along with it, but took a picture of myself with the girl's name written on by hand. Uh, I was all okay, here's a pic of me just to prove I'm legit. Could you do the same? And she literally just sent the text attachment one image. Legmog says, when I was all, mm, that didn't work, could you please try again? They kept avoiding it while still trying to continue on with the conversation. Mm, that would raise alarm bells for me too, Legmog. For sure. So yeah, so it, it, look, it, I get the impression from the text that she only sent text through saying attachment one image. They're trying to make out that the um, she tried to send the image but it didn't get through, which sounds very sus to me. Smurfery says, uh, I just don't want to give up 100% of my muscle memory from Maya. <laughs> which is fair enough, because I mean, you, you get used to shortcut keys on, in programs that you use. So, and <laughs> you guys have seen me sometimes, I hit the Windows key when I mean to hit the Alt key. Um, because different programs have been set up differently to what I'm used to in Macs. Uh, but I think it's just because I hit the Windows key instead of the Alt key because they're right beside each other and I'm not looking at what I'm doing on the keyboard. <laughs> but I get where you're coming from, Smurf. Sniper Girl says to leg mod, whoa. Smurfer says for the basic stuff like viewport navigation, display modes and selection. Mm. Uh, Legmog says they suddenly got very sexual, okay, uh, but when I was, okay, picture or no deal, I think the scammer just gave up and said, please be my crush at this link and sent an obvious spam virus website link. Thank God you didn't click on that link, Legmog. you got to be really careful. I mean, there seem to be quite a few of these scammers going around at the moment, like on Twitch, obviously on Tinder, um, offering links. Just... For the love of God, guys and girls, don't click on links from anonymous people that are, people that are sent to you. Please don't do it. The same goes for email. Don't click on links in your email if it's coming from somebody you don't know. Um, and even be wary of links from people you do know, simply because, you know, somebody's PC could get hacked and they harvest their email list and pretend to be them. Or they can spam their uh, email header and stuff like that so it pretends to be from somebody you know. Yeah, so don't click on links in email and don't click on links from anonymous people on Twitch or on Tinder, obviously. So that was smart, like, it does sound like a scammer to me. Probably some guy, you know, some 60-year-old overweight man sitting at his PC. Um, Sniper Girl says, well, you first started building the Noah with Noah. That's exactly right, Sniper Girl. Me and Noah are like this. We're best buddies. Well, we were until Noah died. I'm still here. Um, Sniper Girl says you have a lot of luck. Yes, he does have a lot of luck, Sniper Girl, doesn't he? Legmog. Wow. Uh, Legmog says, bah, on the. And in another story, today's date didn't happen. Not with the scam girl. Oh, that's no good. I had to set up a date with another girl. Man. I feel for your leg, Bob. You put it, you put the effort in. Like you're putting in 110. percent I'll give you that. And I'm sure you know. Eventually, you'll get there. It takes a while. You know, finding people you're compatible with is not easy. So. Uh, Sniper Girl says, speaking of email, got a phishing email from a company wanted me to send my resume info for a potential job, and the page was Yahoo email. I've received those as well, Sniper Girl. Yeah, these scammers, they they offer you a position, they, this wonderful sounding position. Uh, they want you to send your resume, which are generally people's resumes have might have your address on it. Mine doesn't. Uh, it will have your number on it, your phone number on it, your name, where your work history, obviously. 
and all that sort of stuff is gold to scammers and spammers and people that want to rip off your identity. Um, but the Yahoo email address or a Gmail email address is a dead giveaway for, for these guys. So, yeah, I'm glad you spotted that sniper girl. I, I've got them as well. Uh, sniper girl says, leg mode date with a real girl. That's not a bad thing. That's right. Smurpery says, uh, all the HR person is like 50 years old. <laughs> Uh, Legmog says, uh, we'd arranged to meet up last week, date time was set and agreed to, message to yesterday being all still on for tomorrow, and she just said, oh, I haven't checked my uh, diary, silly me. Mm. I'd move on from that one. Even if it's true, it's rude, you know. I'm not saying she's lying, but if she's telling the truth, and that's just, <laughs> she's not putting it very high on her priority list, so I'd, I'd move on from her. Uh, to me, that's rude. I, I'd be offended at that. Sniper Girl says, yeah, it was uh, an 80 k, 85 to 115k, I think. Saw through it in a second. Thank God you did. Yeah, you've got to be so careful these days online. You really do. There are some assholes around, let me tell you. <laughs> Tank Mug says, uh, and that was all she said. I was just like thinking, mm, like, can you check your diary then? But she didn't say anything else, and I didn't want to come off as pushy. Yeah, I, I'd move on from her if I was you, like, Mark, she sounds... Uh, well, I would be offended to begin with, that, that I'm such a second thought, you know, afterthought for this girl. She couldn't be bothering checking her diary. Uh, Lake Mog says, yeah, totally an indecisive answer. I was just thinking, wow, <laughs> if I hadn't messaged you just now, I'd never have known you're still up for the... you're still up in the air. Yeah, it's, it's rude. I think it's rude. And I'd be offended. And I would move on. Because, yeah, even even if it's true, I'd still be offended and I still think it's rude. So, <laughs> find someone else. Okay, so what are we doing? We are going to jump into 3D Studio Max and look at this bathtub. So this is the bathtub we are going to be UV mapping and then texturing. Just a bathtub but a pretty grand looking bathtub. Uh, I wanted something that suited the building. And the, the, the building, actually the building's changed a little bit since when you guys saw it last year when I was working on it. Um, there's a lot more stained glass and stuff in the building now. So I wanted something that would fitting with all of the lovely stained glass that I put in the building. Uh, Legmark says, so I just said, okay, well, let's just put a rain check on tomorrow then. Just let me know when you've had time to check your diary and tell me some dates that work and left it at that. Well, at least you're being very nice about it. That sounds like a perfect reply to me, um, Legmark. And hey, you know, if you want to, if she does contact you and make an arrangement for another time and you want to do it, then do it. I probably wouldn't, but you know, you do what you want to do. <laughs> Android Lust says that tub looks glorious. I, I, I would love a bathtub like this. I would let me tell you. I would love a bathtub like this. Um, yes. So, because it has everything. It has the bath. It has the hand shower, and it has the main shower. That's what these are here. Actually, these are the um, water controls for the three different water sources. In case you were wondering. Um, yeah. And the good thing about this tub design is I can put it in the middle of the bathroom. So instead of me putting the bathtub like up against a wall, which most places, like my the bathtub in, where I live in my apartments, it's against a wall. Um, I wanted something that I could put in the middle of the floor, in the middle of the bathroom. And that's why I it's, have designed it this way. So it can be placed in the middle of the, of the bath, bathroom itself. So a nice focal point for the bathroom. The toilet will go up against the wall, obviously. Uh, Sniper Girl says, nice to see a tub, but there's no throne yet. But I did, I have made the toilet. We'll probably work on that. I don't think we'll finish this today. Uh, if we finish this, I don't, I don't think we'll finish this with, with enough time for me to start on the toilet. So the toilet will probably be next week. But the toilet's coming. Just hold it a little bit longer. But you can have a nice hot bath. You'll be able to have a nice hot bath first. You can pee in the bath. I mean, come on. 
Uh, leg mode says, I suppose if worse comes to worse, you could always pee. Oh, there you go. Pee in the bath. There you go. I don't read my chat. Leg mode. Great minds think alike. Uh, Sniper Girl says the leg mog or the sink. That's right, we have these two vanity units that are completed so you can pee in the sink. You're still going to have to go into the forest if you want to do a number two though. You don't want to do that in the bath. <laughs> Gross. Gross. How did we get on this subject? I blame you. And you. Uh, Sniper Girl says, all the, uh, been holding it for every year. Well, yeah. <laughs> Your belly must be out to here. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. I've just got this vision of a person holding in their pee for like a year and bloated up. <laughs> All right. Uh, let us start attaching these bits together and then I'm going to send it over to Rise of Mubi. You know the drill, guys. So let's start doing attaches. Back in sink, the curtains, the curtain ties. I can feel it now, the love is sending down. Oh, the hand shower. I caught you chasing the sun as I was chasing the main shower and the backing board. I think that might be everything. I'm just going to double check. Oh, no, looks like I've forgotten a few bits and pieces. This is why I always like to open um, open up the browser here and check what I might have missed. Oh, there we go. I've missed the uh, rail at the top. I've missed the hooks for the curtain. And what else have I missed? Let me have a look again. I've missed these. What are these? Oh, okay. The other side bits of the tap. And the supports for the rail. I think that's everything, but let's just double, double check, triple check. Yes, the bathtub. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of the A off the end of that. Cause this one I called bathtub, not bathtub A. Um, I just designed up a couple of different bathtubs. It was going to be between this one and another one, but what I ended up doing was combining both of them together. So, so the best of both worlds. That's why I had a bathtub A and a bathtub B. All right, let's send this over to Ryzen so we can start UV mapping. Actually, just before I do that, I'm just going to do a save as an attached version here. Now we can send it over. Start with let's start with the rings, why not? No. Let's try this one. I don't think that one's gonna work for us. Let's try this one. Certainly not going to work for us. We'll get there. Let's try this one. No, actually I don't really like the way it's cutting the mesh there. I certainly don't like the way it's cutting the mesh there. These rings are proving really quite difficult to unwrap. They shouldn't, because they're quite a basic thing to be 
trying to rap. Um, I wonder if I should do them in max. It might be easier for me to do them in max. Because none of these are really um, unwrapping this, and this should not be difficult to unwrap, really. I think we'll do the rings in, in max. Uh, I'll probably just do a planar mapping on them. Maybe a cylindrical, I'm not sure. Sniper Girl says, uh, was kind of funny. One of my roommates asked if I could, if I colored the prop yet, as if uh, all we do is simply color our asset. <laughs> Well, I'm wondering why it's having such a problem with this mesh. It shouldn't. Really, really should not be having this so much of a problem. But it certainly is. Thinking of, I might do it inside of Rhizom here. The mesh itself is not. Right. <laughs> First time I've seen that. Bloody Windows? Windows 10, come on! Oh, you, you, you. You annoying piece of software. I let go of the shift key, that's why I lost my um, selection. Uh, Android Lust says, that's what a few of my friends say to Sniper Girl, but if I try to explain the process, uh, Android Lust says, tried that, didn't, didn't go well. <laughs> I'm going to cut this one a little bit further back. Happy Girl says, might as well have been speaking ancient Greek. I, I find that with a lot of people I talk to, when I say I stream on Twitch, they don't really know what Twitch is. I mean, not everyone knows what <laughs> knows about Twitch, and yeah, I find it funny. They think I've they got no idea what I'm, when I say oh, I stream on Twitch, they go, they don't know what I mean. Uh, and let alone trying to explain anything to do with 3D to a non-3D person. No point. They'll never get it. They don't understand. They make a good effort, but they don't understand. Shoes, standing where I'm meant to be. 
That's a bit better. Oh, I forgot that there were two on this side as well. <laughs> Let's do these two. He's now got windows on my stream machine is telling me with a little one of those little pop-ups in the corner. I know there's cut lines all over the place, but that's okay. Again, we're going to be using a brass texture for these, so it'll work for what we want. <laughs> and I hit the Windows key by mistake. Okay, let's move on to this base piece. Let's go through them one by one and see what we get. Gonna try the others to see if we get a better result. I actually prefer that. I prefer the cuts to be along the edge. We could work with that, but we'll just see if there's anything better. Oops. No, it's going to have to be between these three.
Gotta be this one. No, not that one. This one. Now this one I'm going to do a cut through the back because the, the back is never seen here. It's up against the, um, the piece that goes to the floor. Okay, did not like that. Let's just try doing a pelt map. That's probably better. Android Lost says, the last character I completed, I made a huge mistake in the posing stage, <laughs> so the current character is my redemption. <laughs> Could you fix it? Or did you redo it? Or did you just move on to something different? Snappy Girl says, nice. So yeah, I think that's a better unwrap on this. Again, this is going to be wood, so... And yeah, Snubby Girl's asking, how did you pose it? And Android Doss says, I fixed it, I had to. This is a really weird piece of geometry for the software to try and uh, unwrap. I don't know that we're going to get a better unwrap than that because it is such a strange shape. Most of it's hidden really. The only part we can really see is the lip of the bathtub and of course the interior as well. wondering why it's done that. Which is this piece here. It should go in here.
Android Lux says I regularly might pose it, but I would pose it and then take it back into ZBrush to add a bit of extra. The mistake came in when I deleted the rig. <laughs> Why would I do that and saved it? <laughs> oh man, how do you hate that? Android Lux says I'm deleting rigs that are skinned will reset parts of the mesh. Deleted the rig. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wow. Man. See what the software does. So some, it's a, this is why I've been doing packing in Max. It's pack tool sometimes can be a little strange. I don't know if it's this version I'm using or yeah, it can, it can get completely lost with its pack tool sometimes. Deleted the rig. Sniper girl says, "Yep, Edo. Edo is good to see you, buddy. I saw the." Uh, image you posted in the gallery. It's looking very sweet. We'll have a look at it toward the end of the stream. Ido's been working on the hair on one of his characters. Android Lost says, yeah, dumb me. I probably was sleepy. I blame that. Oh, look, I've done that too. I've made a change to a file I've been working on. 3D object. Saved it. And after I've saved it, realized, oh wow, I've overwritten a file I didn't want to overwrite because I've, I've changed something and I wanted to be able to go back to it. That's why I generally try and do the revision numbers every time I do some a big change in a model, just in case I need to go back, but I have made the error where I've forgotten. Why is the tub giving me such trouble? It's not letting me stitch. Why is it not letting me stitch? Why you not let me stitch? Chilling like a villain, Edo says. I, I'm good, thanks for asking. Nope, nope, everything's good. Android Lost says, pose is perfect, let's delete it. <laughs> but yeah, the character hair is looking very sweet, Edo. Why are you being such a pain to unwrap? Why, 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 why? This is a pre-existing cut that's in the mesh before I start UV mapping it and it's causing an issue for this model so I've got to try and work out why that's there. I think the only way for me to fix it is going to be to jump back into Max because I can't seem to get it to weld. We'll leave the tub for a second. Um, I might send it back. Over. We'll continue UV mapping the rest, then I'll send this back to Max and I'll look at what's going on with the tub. So let's work on this back piece. The joys of UV mapping. Sniper Girl says doing well, have the ZBrush work for the next art test done, working on UVing the low. And she wants to bake it tonight.
Uh, Snappy Girl says, unlike some people, Cockbill, <laughs> I'm forcing a lot of my curved islands straight. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I'm not not forcing these curves straight because I'm using Substance Painter and it handles it fine. Um, it, it's not great for, for the reasons we discussed yesterday, but also because it's not a great use of the UV space when they're curved like this. You can fit more texture per object by straightening them out and packing it better because it, it doesn't pack correctly when it's curved so just going to see if any of the other unwraps are going to do a better job for me I'm wondering if this is another piece I might take back into Max and use Max's tool. Might be better. Okay, let's try the curtains. They're going to be interesting. those lines so I can see what's going on. Ido says, I didn't get the job at Ubisoft in Canada. Oh, that's a shame, you, um, Ido. There'll be other jobs though. Ido says, to be frank, I don't have anything of what their company would make. That's the other problem too, yeah. Like, um, there have been a couple of game studios I'd like to work for, but 
my work, the stuff I make doesn't suit the style of the games that they make generally, so... There will be other jobs though, other companies. You know, I think the reason we're having some problems with this mesh, these meshes, is because of these pre-cuts that are on the model. Again, I'm, I might jump back into Max, I think. So we're going to send this back to Max. I'm just going to change this setting from New to Edit, so next time I send it back over we don't lose what we've already UV mapped. Going to collapse my stack. Just going to temporarily detach the bathtub. Let's do a reset on the X form. Okay. It's telling me there's some issue here. It might be that the um the normals have flipped. Yeah, it looks like the normals have flipped. Let's collapse the stack. I'm just going to look at the UVs that are assigned to it. That's fine, just standard. Um, I might send this over piece by piece to Ryzen. I think it might be easier. Instead of trying to work on the whole model at the same time, it might just work on a piece by piece. That's still got that right there. What's the best way for me to get rid of that? I uh, can't remember now. There is a way. I just don't I don't run into this problem that often, so I've forgotten how to do it. Um, it's not a reset on the X form. One one way to do it that I, I remember is to actually export the model and re-import it. So I'm just going to close Ryzen down. Let me just pop it into into the right folder. Just going to call it Temp Tub. And also just going to export it as an OBJ actually. That was an FBX. I'm just going to do an OBJ. Because I don't want it to transfer the UVs along. I just want the model. Let's import one of those pieces. Go with the OBJ version.
hit the keyboard, smash that keyboard. Where did it put it is the next question. I'm assuming it's put it over where the old one was. It doesn't look like <laughs> where, is it, where did it put it? It doesn't look like it imported it for some reason. Let, let me do that again. Let's try the FBX version. Wow. Wow. Where did the bathtub go? Where did my tub go? <laughs> and it exploded, that's right. Huge and sideways, I know. Nothing else as well, yeah. Okay, so what happened here? What's happened here? is when I imported the FBX version it was named the same as the version we had so for some reason Max has decided to remove the old one um, I don't know why it, um, <laughs> oh wow God, you gotta love Max uh, no I don't want to save a copy of the current scene because we did save it before we sent it over so we should be good let, let me just open Max up again Oh, Max, 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 Max. <laughs> Autodesk, gotta love. Yes, crosswind. Good going, Autodesk. <laughs> that dreaded noise Android lost, that's right, of the crashing program. Now, just before I open up the file again, I'm going to import one of those bathtubs and see what's going on. Uh, one of the ones we exported, that is, the tub. When Max gets its act together. I don't know what they've done on a desk with the new version 2020 of Max, but it takes forever to start. 2018 was not like this. It used to start up relatively quickly, but you see how it sort of, <laughs> it opens up and gets hung on this for, there we go. Very annoying. Let's import the OBJ. I want to see what's going on here. Wow. That OBJ made a bit of a mess there. It might just be the, um, the smoothing groups. So I'm just going to check that. No, I don't think it is. It's a problem there that with the export of the OBJ file. Let's try the FBX version. Now it's come in the right way. Remember when we imported the FBX before, it turned it on its side and made it huge. It didn't do it with this one, which is good. But what I'm going to do is I want to check to see if that, that UV problem is still there. So I'm going to send it over to Ryzen. Okay, Ryzen wants an edit poly, not an edit mesh, so I must convert it. And it's still there. Wow. There is a way to get rid of it, but for the life of me, I can't remember how to do it now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the mapping. Now I'm going to send it back to Ryzen. Still there. It's impossible. 
The UV mapping has been completely cleared. I wonder if it's, um, actually it might be that the verts are not welded. Let's check that. I'm going to take it as high as I can before it starts to misshape the mesh. Let's send it back over to Ryzen now. So it's not a problem with the verts being split. Looks like it might have been introduced when I did the uh, boolean to cut out the hole for the plug. Again, see what it's doing? It's cutting it out. It shouldn't be. Not multiple UV sets, I'm just double checking that. Go back to max. Close that for a minute. throw a checker pattern down. I want to check how the UV mapping is going. Check it, check it, check it, check it. Check it. And uh, let's tile it ten times. Let's send it back to Ryzen. Collapse the stack. <laughs> it's still there. That is so strange. So strange. I can't work this one out. It's got me stumped. Crosswind says probably the billion, billion scripts loading in the background. <laughs> Why is it doing this? I'm drowning from my own 
dream I'm falling through this empty space I'm wondering I thought it might have been a double polygon but that's not the problem either Let's try the world again, just with those three verts selected that are having the issue. Let's send it back over to Ryzen again. Still there. It's changed shape, but it's still there. Wow. It's got. It's got. I have a feeling what's caused it is when I did the pro boolean to cut out the hole for the um for the drain. It's caused some issue with the mesh. It's this hole that's causing the issue. I may have to remake the tub if I can't work out why it's doing it. Edge with zero length? Yeah, I don't know. I don't quite know what... You can see it here. It looks like... Uh, that to me looks like double poly. Like it's there's two polys lying on top of each other and they're z-fighting. So I have a feeling it's something to do with that. Let me just do an SDL check on it, see what the um, program says. So it's telling me there are no errors, so I'm not sure exactly what's going on. It lies, Smurfery says, that's right. Android Lost says, I hate using Boolean and Maya because, yeah, I... <laughs> It's always a problem with Boolean. When, when you Boolean a mesh, you never know there is what, what, what it's going to actually do to the mesh. Max's Boolean tools are generally not too bad. But yeah, you can run into problems. Because it's got Max has got Pro Cutup, Boolean and Pro Boolean. There are three different Boolean operations you can do on an object. Three different tools. I use Pro Boolean, but it's obviously caused an issue for the mesh. There's a couple of ways around this, actually. Um, yeah. 
just let me have a look. At the, at the original um, bathtub. This is before I cut the hole out. So that's why I have all these versions. <laughs> if I need to go back, I can. <laughs> if I run into one of these problems, I'm going to collapse the stack. Turn it to a poly. Grab just the bathtub. Let's send this over to Rise and see if I have a, still have that problem. Now you see it's gone. It's the, it's the Boolean that the operation has caused some issue with the mesh. That's okay. We know that we can we can do it a couple of different. Ways. Like I cut the hole out for the for the plug. That's pretty probably unnecessary for a game model because um, I'm slightly adding more polys by doing the cut. Uh, I could just place the drain there and and probably just uh, even just add a really low res circle that I can then add a black texture to to make it look like the drain is dark. I'll show you what I mean. I said, that's the way I'm going to do it because trying to do a cut on this object is causing all sorts of issues. So at least we worked out what the problem was. So I'm going to save the tub as its own object and we'll call it tub to fix. Let's load up the optimized file we were working with before. Which will be the attached version, I believe. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, instead of me actually cutting the hole out, I'll do something else. For the first things first, we need to detach the tub. You avoid billions like the plague, uh, Sniper Girl says. Yeah, and Crossman was saying uh, it could be overlapping verts. That's what it looked like to me. It looked like vertices were over either verts or, or polys were overlapping. But doing a weld should have fixed that, and it didn't. So it's very strange. Um, Smurfery says it looks like the area is contained on flat faces, so you could easily cut that area out and rebuild it without having to work without to work about smoothing. Yeah, I could. Have, th this is going to be quicker doing it this way. Um, Crosswind said, that's why I switched to Fusion 360 Boolean for days and not many worries. I have to check it out because, I mean, I like I like Booleans. I find them really useful, but not if they're going to cause problems with my mesh. My, most times it doesn't, but sometimes like this it does. And it, generally I think it has to do with the geometry of the actual object you're doing a cut on. If it's, if it's a complex sort of geometry shape, it has an issue. If it's just a, like a flat surface, a cube, a cylinder, or whatever. Generally, it's okay. But I, I will check out Fusion 360. Work equals worry. That's right, Smith. Android Lust says, Brilliance just brings back memories of <laughs> me newbie days or almost lost hours of work worth of work from it. Okay, so that's the old bathtub. I'm just going to rename this. I'm going to import as a merge. Uh, what do we call it? Tub fixed. Just rename the material. It should be in the identical spot the other one was in. It is. I've just got to select the old one. Is that the old one? I thought I renamed the old one. Dude! That's the new one. 
this should be the old one. Yes, okay. Then it looks fine in the viewport, but it's not. So we're going to remove the old one. We've got the new one in there that doesn't have the hole. Uh, I'm just going to try. Go into wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, good. Let's just lift this up a bit. Jump into the top viewport. Can't really see what I'm doing in the top viewport. I'm just been temporarily going to detach the plug so I can change the color so I can see what it is, where it is, I should say. Make it a nice dark color. <laughs> and I had the wrong thing selected. Okay, now we can see it in the top viewport. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to. I don't think a box will work for me. We'll go with a cylinder with a really low sides value. Let's try six. Just so I don't add too many polys unnecessarily. And I'm just going to change the color of that to a black. move it up so it sits just under the plug and now that's baking our drain it does the same thing because it would have it would have shown up as black inside the game anyway so. Smurfery says I once made a plane by using three consecutive boolean shaped like uh, orthographic top side front silhouettes it was horrifying <laughs> Crosswind says, I've found the best export format from Fusion is .sat. You can control the resolution of the file in Max, so you can get a high and low poly pretty easily, with usually minimal cleanup. The only real issue is the mesh is triangulated. Oh, I'm definitely going to check Fusion out, because uh, that sounds really cool. Fusion 360. I'm actually going to look at that right now. I'm going to do a search here. Because I'm interested. Oh, it's an Autodesk product. I didn't realize it was an Autodesk product. Integrated CAD CAM and eliminate your disconnected product development process. Unified design engineering manufacturing into a simple platform. Because uh, I have an Autodesk account. I'm surprised I haven't looked at it before. I'm not sure if it's part of the subscription that uh, the studio have with Autodesk. I'd have to check that. It does look cool. And Red Lust says, never heard of Sat? No, I hadn't heard of Dot Sat either. That's why I wanted to check out what was going, what, what, what he was talking about. Crosswind says, I had not heard of Dot Sat either until I uh, saw it in a YouTube video. Crosswind says, Fusion's free for hobbyists and students. Oh, okay. 
I will check it out after the stream. And I'll look at that dot .sat format you were talking about, because that sounds really useful. For sure. Ah, uh, but this should fix the problem I'm having with the drain anyway. Just let me change the colour of the drain itself back to what it should be. Good. Alright, let's send the tub over to Ryzen UV as its own object. Um, again, this, this is, these are game models, and with a game, it's going to, your meshes are going to be triangulated anyway as soon as they are imported into the game engine. So even if you have a lovely quad mesh model, quad model, poly quad, quads, as soon as it's imported, the game engine is going to convert it to tries. So. Um, let's have a look here. Let's see what it can do with it now. That's much better unwrapped for me. We're getting a little bit of stretching happening, that's what the red is. But we're going to be assigning a porcelain texture to this anyway in substance, so that should be fine. But Phil, triangles, I know, triangles. Andrew Doss says I'll force it backwards back to quads. Yeah, it's like, like yeah. Unfortunately, with with, with with game engines rasterization, uh, it it uh, triangulates every mesh anyway. As soon as it's imported into the engine, so you can spend you know countless hundreds of hours doing your lovely quads. But as soon as if it's a game model, as soon as you bring it into a game engine, it's going to be triangulated. Which um can get people, people can get confused and, and cause people problems because the number of polys in a quad mesh is going to be different than the number of polys in a triangulated mesh. It's basically going to double. So some, you know, so, say you're working on a game and your lead or your uh, technical guy says your model must not be more than 5,000 polys. Well, what he really means is 5,000 triangles. So if you make your model at 5,000 quads, as soon as you import it into the game engine, it might blow out to 10,000 tries. So you, it, people can get can get caught up that way as well. Confusing. Uh, Snappy Girl says I've had people complain about triangles. Uh, I just look at look and stare at them. <laughs> Crossfit Win says I've been quantifying the meshes and doing some cleanups since some time the geometry generates can be kind of uh, poly soup. So it's not always perfect, but it's still a good start, especially for really complex mechanical shapes. Now look, it sounds very cool. And this dot sat format, I wanna I wanna look into that a bit more. I'm not familiar with it. I wanna look at look at it exactly because that sounds really cool, the option of being able to change it on the fly like that. Sounds really cool. So I will check that out. Okay, so we've um, UV mapped our tub. It looks like I think we we lost our UVs we did for the rest of the tub because we were because Max crashed. <laughs> oh Max, 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 Max. Um, what I might do here is I might just um, I'm gonna actually I'm not gonna collapse my stack. Having that modifier on top reminds me that I've already UV mapped the top, so. But I want to look at this back piece here. So I'm going to root detach it as well. It wasn't giving us those problems we had with the tub, but it wasn't UV mapping up easily. So uh, I'm going to... Have a look at Max's unwrapping. That's a mess. Max makes a bit of a mess when it does its unwrap. Uh, again, I'm going to make sure all of my verts are actually welded.
can generally go up to about 0.4 before it starts to mess the mesh up. I'm going to send this over to Ryzen now on its own and we'll see what, what sort of job Ryzen does with it. Still doesn't do a great job. I mean, it's better than Max, but, <laughs> but not a great job. Again, it's one of those really funny pieces of geometry to try and use in that. So I'm wondering if I might give it a hand. So again, I'm going to jump back into Max. going to detach this piece of geometry we'll send that over to rise on its own much too far from my mic you probably can't hear me and uh, Having a bit of an issue.
uh, Cryptic Geo, Cryptic Geo says, Bob would be a good job just learning UV stuck. Sorry, dude, it took me, I've been concentrating on, on what I'm doing here. What would be a good job just learning UVs stuck? What do you mean, Cryptic Geo? What would be a good job? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what do you mean, though, what would be a good job? I'm not, not sure what you mean by that. So, yeah, what do you mean by good job? You mean software to use, or you mean something that you can practice with? I'm, I'm just not sure what you mean. So explain to me what you mean, and then I'll, I'll try and answer your question. Um, Sniper Girl says, yeah, I got my pro prop UV'd, just need to stack them. Cryptic Geo, where? what are you using to UV? Cryptic Geo says, uh, you said that 3D Studio Max did not do a good job, and then Ryzen didn't either, but it was uh, in between, yeah. Max's UV tools are fine. Um, they're just a lot more work. Ryzen does uh, most of the times. Yesterday, you guys watched me UV map up the um, the vanity for the bathroom. Ryzen didn't have a problem with that. So most times Ryzen is fine. Most times Max is fine. It just depends on the geometry sometimes as to how much of a problem the software has mapping. That's the issue. So it's, it's more to do with the object you're trying to UV map than the software you're using. Sometimes you've just got to have to do things more by hand, which I hate doing. <laughs> I hate doing stuff by hand. But sometimes you've got no choice. Oops, let me move that over here. Uh, Cryptic Gia says, I need to watch your UV for sure. I missed that. Yeah, yesterday's stream. It's under the video section of my on my Twitch page if you want to watch yesterday's stream. I, I, I UV mapped the, um, the vanity for the bathroom and that we did that relatively quickly. And then we jumped into Substance Painter to texture it up. Cryptic Geo says, I have Max was considering trying Ryzen. Yeah, Ryzen is a good program. I do recommend it. Particularly if you hate UV mapping, mapping like I do. Uh, it does save you a lot of time. Instead of having to go through here like this and do it by hand. Because I hate doing stuff by hand. Just because I'm lazy, more than anything. And UV mapping, I've never, I've never enjoyed doing UV mapping. It's always been something I hate doing. It's really important, but <laughs> it's not, not enjoyable for me anyway. Cryptic Geo says I'm still uh, letting ZBrush do my UVs. There's well, nothing wrong with that. It's not cheating. If it gets the job done, it's not cheating. <laughs> Android Lust says ZBrush. I did it once. I didn't like it. <laughs> the guys will tell you how much I don't like ZBrush. I mean, I use it because it's good software, but I hate the interface in ZBrush. I really hate the interface. undo that. I think I got a bit carried away with my stitching there.
I'm just going to throw a checker pattern on this so I can see what it's doing. Uh, Andrew Doss says, ZBrush's UVs could work. I believe I tried the UV by polygroup method, but it wasn't perfect for me. Just trying to work out what's going on with the seam here. Uh, Sniper Girl UVs and Maya, yep. There's nothing wrong with UV mapping in the software that, um, the 3D software itself. That's, you know, that, that's, that's fine. I just hate UV mapping, so I like to, um, to use any tool that does it for me because I hate this. I hate having to go through here like this and clean up UV seams. I find it painful. <laughs> yeah, I just, I hate UV mapping. I always, always have. It's never been fun for me. Sometimes you've got no choice though. It's the only way to get a decent UV map is to actually do it by hand. Um, Sniper Girl says, have Ryzen, it's okay. Yeah, look, Ryzen, like, like I said, you saw me UV map yesterday, the vanity unit. It was a complex piece of geometry, but Ryzen handled it fine. It's just sometimes with really weird shaped geometry, like these pieces we've been working on for the bathtub, that Ryzen has a real problem working out the UV mapping form. Generally, it's fine. But really weirdly shaped pieces of geometry, Ryzen can have a problem with. And that's when you've got to get in here and do it by hand. That's okay. We can do it by hand. It just takes longer, that's all. Um, I just want to get rid of that checker pattern, send it back to the normal color. And let's see if Ryzen can do just the top and the bottom of this. Otherwise I'm going to have to do that by hand as well. Let's see how the software does. No, I don't think that one's going to work for us. This one's not going to work for us. Uh, again, you see how the, the program here, it makes these cuts in really strange places. I don't know why. It's just the algorithm it's running. Sometimes chooses to make cuts in the strangest of places. And sometimes like now, you can't really repair it. Sniper Girl says, that's why I say it's just okay. Yeah, well, that, that's right. Yeah. It'll get you 90% of the way there. Or yesterday, it got me 100% of the way there. Um, if I didn't want to worry about straightening out these curved pieces, like you were talking about yesterday. It's 
but it, so it can get you like at least 90 90 percent the way there and then you can do the rest by hand i get it i guess if you really want to do it like that so undo that try and find something that might work better Um, Android Lost says, I made the habit of you being once a, a part of the mesh is done. Yeah, that's a, that's a, probably a, a good workflow to follow. So what uh, Android Lost is saying, he makes the part of the mesh that he's, he makes a part of the object he's creating and he UV maps that part before moving on to the other parts and UV mapping them as he goes. That's, that's probably a good way to work. Or you can just, make the whole model and then worry about you being at the end like I'm doing at the moment. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... None of the tools here are really going to give me what I want. This might be a case of another one of those times where I might just have to do it in max. So we're getting a lot of stretching here. Because yeah... Even, you, you can make adjustments to these tools, so, so for instance, if I set this to 1, let's set it to 4, sort of thing. So you can make adjustments to the automated tools to get you closer to what you want, but it's still going to create cuts and spots here that are really strange. At least for this piece of geometry. Um, Snappy Girl says, I like my UVs nice and tightly packed and optimized. That's what I do, UV after done. Yeah, I generally do it that way as well, Snappy Girl. I usually do the UVing after I've done the model. But doing it Android Lost way is probably a good way, a good workflow as well. It might make it easier for you to UV map. Sniper Girl says UVs as I go or UV at the end doesn't matter. Do you just still have to pack the UVs? Well, that's true. Android Lost says, yep, because it could get overwhelming, which is very true. Sniper Girl says, might as well open up the UV editor just once and do some UVing and packing at the same time. Well, that's true too. It just depends on how you want to do your workflow. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to accept this. I'm going to close Rosen down. We're going to jump back into Max and look at its UV tools. So, let's throw an unwrap down. In fact, let me throw a checker pattern on that so I can check it. Work out the best way to do this. What I might do is I might break the mesh up a little bit more. Let's move that out of the way. So I'm going to detach that piece. Send that back over to Rhizom. Let's see what it does with that. Back 
in those days when we used to play. I remember back when we used well, to play. Let me stitch. Let's send that back to Max. Let's send this back to Ryzen, but we'll edit the UVs. We won't create a new set. Let me catch up with the chat. Cryptic Geo says, so the real question is who is more right? <laughs> really though, thanks for all the insight, no problem. Yeah, it, it, it just depends on what you find easier to work with. Some Crosswind does it as he goes. I do it after the model's been cre completed. If you, you, I think doing it as you go is probably a better way to do it. You'll get less confused because UV mapping an entire object can get a bit confusing sometimes. So if you UV map the small bits that make the model up as you're making it, I think you'll find that'll be an easier way to do it. So that, that would be my suggestion, crosswind's way. It's an easier way to do it. Less confusing. Uh, Android Lust says the person who passes the model to someone else to UV is more right. Sniper Girl says agree with you there. Sniper Girl says speaking of which, Android Lust want to finish my UV to my art for my art. Uh, and Android Lost says, depends, it, is it an engine of some sort? Um, Sniper Girl says, can't say what it is. Is that a yes? <laughs> Android Lost says, no. Android Lost says, I do enjoy you being. Uh, yeah, Android Lost actually is one of those strange people that likes to UV. Sniper Girl says, wish it was as cool as an engine. So what I'm going to do, I just wanted to look at the tools that, um, that the software that Ryzen has instead of doing it in Max, but it might be easier for me to do it in Max. Yeah, because the straighten tools here um, doesn't seem to want to work. Oh, hang on, maybe I'm in the wrong. straight tools in this program we'll, we'll jump back into max I didn't make any changes I don't think
Let's move this off to the side so it's easier for me to work with. This, this is why I hate working in, why I hate doing UVing. I'm going to do what Sniper Girl does all the time and how she does it all the time is beyond me because I hate it. Uh, and I'm going to straighten these up. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I only hate it because it's so time consuming and mind numbingly boring. <laughs> That's the reason I don't like UV mapping so much. Really important, I'm not saying it's not important to do, but it, man, is it boring. Make sure I don't grab too many of these verts. Right, so the top here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. 
I hate doing this so much. Oh, you have no idea. Um, Sniper Girl says, oh, I don't mind you being. Wish there was a good auto UV that you via that does as good a job as I can. Sniper Girl says, I'd just rather be texture baking and texturing than instead of spending time UVing. Me too. Android Lost says, I like masking, uh, I like making all the cuts before unfolding just to see if I can get it perfect in one go. It's like uh, a game. Sniper Girl says, it's not that I like UVing, I like things getting done right. If Verizon did it correctly, I'd use that. I'm just trying to work out a better way for me to, because I hate doing this by hand. You have no idea, guys. I really, really hate it. Um, what I might do, I, I did this with one of the other pieces of, one of the, do you remember we were having an issue with, um, the vanity unit with some polygons on the vanity unit so I took it into ZBrush I might do that with this piece of geometry as well I think so I'm going to collapse the stack uh, I do have a ZBrush bridge here I don't generally work that way though I normally export the file and then bring it into ZBrush I can't even remember where it is now Did I not reinstall it? Maybe I didn't. Interactive scripting. Substance Phoenix View. Oh, it's just going to be easy for me to do it this way. I'm going to export the um, the piece of geometry to the desktop. It's only a temporary file. As an OBJ. Top temp. Let's jump into ZBrush. Actually, how are we going? Oh, we're, yeah. What I'll do is I'll I'll do this uh, off stream. I think probably. So what I'm gonna what I'll do is I'll go I'll get um, ZBrush to do a remesh on it, and after it does its remesh, I'll do a remodel, a, a re UV map either in Ryzen or in Max. But I think we might have to leave it there for today, guys and girls. Um, I do want to thank you all very much though for hanging out with me and for watching. I will be back on again on Monday next week at 5pm. That's when I'll be live next. Uh, I'll have, I'll, like I said, I'll remesh a couple of these pieces that are giving us some problems with the UV mapping. And we'll pick this up on Monday next week when I come back, when I stream next. Yes, I know. Two hours already, Android lost. Where does it go? It is just two hours, yes. <laughs> but yes, thank you guys very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, remember, if you like the stream, to follow me on Twitch. If you want to know when I'm live, you can follow me on Twitter at phildoz 3 d because I always post when I go live to Twitter. Uh, remember to join the phildoz 3 d Discord server. You can get the invite link by clicking on the graphic below my in my panels below my stream. And uh, you can check out my YouTube channel as well, which has all of my past broadcasts, but they're a couple of months behind. You guys have a great weekend, great week, and I will see you all on Monday next week. See you guys. <laughs>